ABC Sports presents the 1981 World Series from Yankee Stadium in New York, the Dodgers and the Yankees. Last Thursday, the Yankees claimed their 33rd American League Championship with a three-game sweep over the Western Division champion, Oakland A's. The Los Angeles Dodgers had to go five games with Montreal before they could claim their 17th National League Championship. It came on a ninth-inning home run, the Dodgers winning 2-1. to one. And tonight, the Yankees and Dodgers meet in Game 1 of the 1981 World Series. And this ABC Sports Exclusive is being brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. By Seiko and your authorized Seiko dealer, this plaque is the sign you can trust to get the best of Seiko. By the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller High Life, if you've got the time, we've got the beer. And by General Electric. GE makes products that make life easier and better. At GE, we bring good things to life. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and welcome to the World Series for 1981. This is the 11th time the Dodgers and the Yankees have faced each other in the Fall Classic. The Dodgers winning in 55 as the Brooklyn Dodgers in 63 as the Los Angeles Dodgers. However, the edge goes to the Yankees in the 10 preceding series, 8-2. The first two games will be played here in New York. An off day for travel, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Los Angeles. Another day off and then back to New York for games six and seven if they are needed. There will be some changes you'll note in the respective lineups tonight. For New York, Reggie Jackson will not play. Lou Pinella will start in right field. That may mean the Yankees lose some foot speed in the outfield, possibly. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, Pedro Guerrero will open in center field. This is one of the toughest center fields in all of baseball to play. Rick Mundy will be in right field, despite the fact left-hander Guidry is starting for New York. Steve Yeager, a right-handed hitter, will be on call for the Dodgers behind the plate instead of Sosha. And one of the reasons is that Yeager historically has a very hot postseason record. So that very briefly is a capsule of what we can expect tonight as the Yankees and the Dodgers get ready the for the 1981 World Series. National and right now, Bob Shepard, the public address Los announcer Angeles. here at Yankee Stadium, and the introduction of the players. In his third World Series in five seasons, the manager, Tom Lasorda. And now his coaches and non-starters. Number 11, Manny Motor. In the bullpen, number 29, Ron Paranowski. Number 33, Danny Ozark. Number 54, Monty Bascal. In the bullpen, number 58, Mark Cressy. Number eight, Reggie Smith. Number 14, Mike Socher. Number 21, Jay Johnstone. Number 26, Alejandro Peña. Number 30, Daryl Thomas. Number 34, Fernando Valenzuela. Number 35, Bob Walsh. Number 37, Robert Castillo. Number 38, Dave Goltz. Number 44, Ken Landro. Number 46, Bert Hooten. Number 48, Dave Stewart. 
Number 49, John Niedenfuhr. Number 51, Terry Forster. Number 52, Steve Sachs. And number 57, Steve Howe. And now the starting lineup. At second base, number 15, Davy Lopes. At shortstop, number 18, Bill Russell. In left field, number 12, Dusty Baker. At first base, number six, Steve Garvey. At third base, number 10, Ron Say. In center field, number 28, Pedro Guerrero. In right field, number 16, Rick Monday. Catching, number seven, Steve Yeager. And pitching, warming up, number 41, Jerry Royce. Now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the New York Yankees. The Hall of Fame pitcher who managed the Yankees to their last world championship in 1978. Number 21, Bob Lemon. And now the coaches and non-starters. Number eight, Yogi Berra. Number 33, Mike Ferraro. Number 40, Charlie Lau. Number 41, Jeff Torborg. In the bullpen, number 42, Clyde. Number 48, Joe Altabelli. In the bullpen, number 51, Dom Scala. Number two, Bobby Mercer. Number 12, Dave Levering. Number 13, Bobby Brown. Number 17, Oscar Gamble. Number 19, Dave Rigetti. Number 23, Barry Foote. Number 24, Dennis Wirth. Number 25, Tommy John. Number 27, Aurelio Rodriguez. Number 34, Dave LaRoche. Number 36, Rick Russell. Number 39, Ron Davis. Number 43, George Frazier. Number 44, Reggie Jackson. Number 45, Rudy May. Number 54, Rich Cossage. And number 55, Andre Robertson. And the starting lineup. At second base, number 30, Willie Randolph. In center field, number 22, Jerry Mumphrey. In left field, number 31, 
Dave Winfield. In right field, number 14, Lou Canella. At first base, number 28, Bob Watson. At third base, number nine, Greg Nettles. Catching, number 10, Rick Cerrone. At fourth stop, number 18, Larry Milborn. And warming up, number 49, Ron Goodwin. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise? We direct your attention now to the microphone near home plate. We ask you now to join Miss Pearl Bailey as she sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through a perilous we watch were so gallantly streamed and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still Oh, say, does that star spangle banner yet wave? Oh, Preamble is just about done. There is one remaining moment as we check in on the weather conditions. The temperature 51 degrees. It's colder than that sometimes in April. The humidity comfortable. The wind is southwest 12 gusting about the stadium. And it has been a clear, lovely autumn day in New York City. The meeting of the umpires at home plate. You see Bob Lemon brought out the Yankee card. Reggie Smith brings out the Dodger card. Gives us a chance to set the umpires for you. Larry Barnett, American League, back of the plate. Nick Colosi, National League, first base. Terry Cooney, American at second. Doug Harvey, who is the senior umpire at third from the National League. Rich Garcia, the American League, down the left field line. And Dick Stello of the National down the right field line. The grass at Yankee Stadium has retained its color. They have not had any frost to speak of in this part of the city. And so consequently, it is bright and fresh and polished and ready to go. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Yankee Clipper, the great Joe DiMaggio, and the ceremonial first pitch. As soon as they finish the conversation at home plate and clear their, that area, Joe will come out to be introduced, and this place will roar. One of the greatest players in the history of baseball. 
we celebrate the 40th anniversary of his fabulous 56 game hitting streak. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the great Yankee Hall of Famer, the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. An athlete of such grace and such dignity, and he's retained it from the first time he stepped on the facade here at Yankee Stadium to become a living legend, Joe DiMaggio. Well, that's your preamble, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to play baseball. The Yankees and Dodgers, game one. Isn't everyone excited about McDonald's You Deserve a Break Today game? Yes! Yes! Don't you love those big prizes? Yes! 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 All that cash? Yes! 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 All those trips? Shouldn't everyone play? Yeah! United announces great low prices on complete Hawaii vacation packages. Prices that bring Hawaii closer from the East Coast. Closer from the Midwest. Closer from every city United serves. United. Once in a lifetime prices for a once in a lifetime vacation. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Check to arrest. All right, the Yankees have taken the field and let us set them for you Thank defensively. You. At first base, Bob Watson played well in the postseason. The abductor muscle pain apparently is all gone for him. Willie Randolph is at second base and back into a familiar leadoff spot at the top of the batting order tonight. Moving over to shortstop, a young man who has been a distinct surprise and so steady for them, Larry Milburn. Playing in relief of Bucky Dent, who was hurt. And of course, Greg Nettles, well, he's just great in the postseason. Against Oakland, he was tremendous with the bat. And when he can't beat you with the bat, he'll do it with the glove. In left field, a young man who is rapidly asserting himself as one of the best in the game, Dave Winfield. Out in center field, it is Jerry Mumphrey. And you may see Jerry going a little toward right tonight because Lou Pinella is in right field. Behind the plate and doing the catching. It is Rick Cerrone, and on the mound, Ron Guidry, the left-hander, whose last appearance was nine days ago. Against the Brewers, he pitched games one and five on three days rest, going four to third and four innings, and those are his season totals there from the unusual season of 1981. It'll be Davey Lopes, Bill Russell, and Dusty Baker, and we're ready to go. Davey Lopes, second base, number 15. is on the money for strike one on his first pitch he has not given up an earned run in the first inning of any game that he has pitched this season now back for strike two he comes out of the bullpen after his warm up walks to the mound throws a breaking pitch for a strike and then comes with a 92 mile an hour fastball and I think here Keith that you're going to see where this is a strikeout pitch if he's going to throw a slider he usually throws it when he's ahead of the hitter and there you can see the slider down and in and Davey got enough of it to stay alive at two strikes and here you'll see the sharp break of his slider which really is his best pitch you talk to any hitter in the American League. The reason he is as successful as he is is because he can throw that pitch almost any place, in or out. Pull sharply down third. Nettles knocks it down. Comes up throwing. Lopes stretching. Can't get there. Nettles throws him out as he starts the game with a great defensive play. Man is 
so very efficient defensively, isn't he? Well, he is, Keith, and, and the reason he's as good at third base as he is, you can see by the depth he plays. He plays the deepest third base in the American League. It allows him to get to many more balls to his right and left, and he has the most accurate arm. Well, Lasorda went out there, not really to complain. He knew he was out. Lopes doesn't get down the first the way he used to, but rather to establish a mood, both in the minds of the umpires and his own team. He doesn't want them reverting back mentally to the ordeal they went through because of Nettles in 78. The umpire at first base is Nick Colosi, who is from the National League. The home plate umpire, Larry Barnett, had gone into the Yankee dugout for a moment. Now he's come back. And we're ready to go with Bill Russell, who has been quite efficient himself in the postseason. Remember, Billy is playing with a fractured bone in his foot. It is not comfortable, but he's playing well. But his percentage in the playoffs reveals the fact it's been true of his career that he's a good clutch hit. Gidry burns the outside corner for a ball strike. Russell nine for 32 in the postseason. Fouled it away, and once again, Gidry is out in front with two strikes. You recall that Bill Russell, the Dodger shortstop, at the broken index finger on the right hand back in September of 80, and he had a lot of trouble learning to use that broken hand. There are the dimensions of Yankee Stadium. Right field, of course, the one they call the short porch. That's fouled away, and the count remains two strikes on Russell. You know, Jim Cerrone says that Gidry has not been pitching effectively recently because he's using the slider too much, that he's not reserving it just for the strikeout pitch. Well, you saw right there, 0 and 2, he came with a fastball. And there's the slider. He has a 92 mile per hour fastball. Uh, it just seems that the, when he really gets hurt is when he gets behind in the count. And to the first two hitters tonight, he's gotten out in front. That's a key to being successful all the time. It doesn't mean that you're automatically going to get the hitter out. But a lot of options when you get ahead of the Russell looks it's outside to make it one and two. One out and nobody on. Lopes on a close play at first base. Called out. A fine play by Nettles down the third base line. Russell hits it sharply. Big bounce for Milburn. Two down. Gidry has one astonishing record, Jim. In 23 starts, he is, including postseason starts, he has not given up an earned run in the first inning. That is, a, that's amazing. Consider because that they've got the batting order place just the way they want it. Exactly, and, and also it's usually the most difficult inning for a pitcher. You come out of the bullpen where the mound might be a little bit different. You don't know what's working for you. You don't know how the hitter is going to react. And Dusty Baker is up there now. Excuse me, Jim. This is a fellow who's had the season of his life, hasn't he? Yeah. 320. 320. Big home runs. Now Gidry's behind. Two balls and no strikes. And this is where Baker is at his best. Real tough 2 0 3 1 hitter, which is the way that most hitters would like to get pitchers. It's a high fly ball out into short right center for Randolph. Drifting back. Well, he makes the catch, and Ron Gidry continues that remarkable string of holding opponents in the first inning. Yankees coming up. Blow away everything you ever heard about pickups and meet the revolutionary new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Chevy S10. Longer than the import. But smaller than full-size pickups. There's never been a truck like it before. Never. Chevy S10. 28 miles per gallon. 39 highway. The standard four-cylinder engine has higher EPA gas mileage ratings than any of the best-selling imports. Chevy S10. It offers optional V6 power. Power to tow twice as much as any import pickup. There's never been a truck like it before. Never! Chevy S10. Big, roomy cab. And heavier payload than many standard full-size pickups. There's never been a truck like it before. Never! Chevy S10. It has two walls of steel in the box sides the imports don't have. Chevy S10. The new size Chevy S10. Don't wait. Order yours today. There's never been a truck like it before. Never! Chevy is the power in trucks. 
The defense for the Dodgers, Steve Garvey at first base. The Iron Man who saves so many throws in the dirt. Good as anybody there. Davey Lopes. A little better health than he's had for some time at second base. Over at shortstop, Bill Russell. We talked about the fact he's playing with a sore foot. Down at third base, Ron Say. And Ronnie is playing with a wrap on his left arm. He had a broken forearm, as you can see. Out in left field, that's Dusty Baker country. He's had an exceptional year defensively as well as offensively. In center field, it's Pedro Guerrero playing center field tonight. He has not had all that much experience out there, and it's a tough place to work. Rick Mundy is in right field. He's a good, steady defensive ball player with a fine arm. Back of the plate, it is Steve Yeager, primarily because, I guess, of his experience, the fact that he's had an awful lot of good luck in postseason play, and he's a good handler of pitchers. Jerry Royce, the rangy left-hander, is on the mound, and he has been a horse through the second part of this season, and he won three big, big ball games for Los Angeles. So he'll pitch to Willie Randolph, Jerry Mumphrey, and Dave Winfield. Royce is going to come right after him. I mean, he just throws a lot of fastballs. He throws two, one with the seams that runs away from the right-handers, one across seamer that kind of rises. And he can make the ball break in. It's just that it's not a slider, but it's a it's kind of a, a, a cut fastball. And you'll see a lot of balls coming in on the right-handed hitters. That's rolled toward the right side, but lopes. Slides over and makes the play. One out. He's an extremely interesting young man, Jerry Royce. There was a time one day in Las Vegas. He was then with Houston. Leo DeRosha was his manager. When he got me aside and had a long talk with me, and he was thinking about quitting baseball. He and Leo hadn't gotten along. Jerry Mumphrey pops it up on the right side. It's out of play. But now today, Royce will tell you, that as he looks back, maybe he was the one who was wrong and DeRosha was right and had his best interests at heart. Changed on him a little there. Well, good, both good managers do. And uh, I know in my relationship with Earl Weaver in Baltimore, I've had my moments. A little sticky. <laughs> yes. Comes with a fastball and it's hit to right for a base hit. Baseball game, Mumphrey with good speed on first base, and Dave Winfield will come to the ball. Dave Winfield. How do you pitch to Winfield, Jim? Very carefully, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I found that um, the more I saw him play, the more respect I had for him. You know, everybody talks about the money he's making, which is obviously probably the biggest salary in baseball, but he can do so many things well, and at the plate, he likes to get his arms extended. Uh, he likes to hit the ball really to center field and he's not what you would call a full hitter and that's not the probably the reason he only has 13 home runs but I try to run the ball away from him make him aware of the pitch away and then come in on in on him. And, uh, I had a lot of success but I saw him hit some home runs both to left field and to right field this year. Royce changed on him and gets it in for a strike. You see how well he did against South Boston in the eight postseason games. He wore him out. Didn't now he? I know why I got him out. <laughs> Strike two. Jerry Royce, when he's on his game, is going to keep that ball low. Well, his fastball moves better down there. It just has a lot of action down, and when he gets hurt, uh, as the ball to Mumphrey was, it was a little bit up in the strike zone. It wasn't a bad pitch. He kind of fought it off. But it's a lot easier to hit the ball up than it is the one down. Mumphrey taking the lead. He stole 56 bases last year. It just has not been a, that daring of a of a base runner this year. Well, Jerry Royce keeps it down on Winfield and gets him on a swinging strike. Dave had two for him very tentative swings. Well, there's the sailing fastball, uh, and when you when you're throwing as hard as Royce does, and the ball moves. It makes it a lot easier to get the hitter out, and he just chased a bad pitch, but that tells you that, that Royce has good stuff. Vanella steps in now. Lou is, has had some trouble getting over a case of the flu. Wasn't terribly sick, but one of those kind of experiences that we oftentimes get with a cold that sort of drains your strength. There's the shot down the right side. It's a fair ball. 
Now it's going into the corner. Mumphrey heading for third. There he'll stop. Oh, get it up into the crowd. So it's a clean yes. rule double. He just guided that ball. You've seen him do it so many times, Jim. He's such a professional hitter. Well, he is. He just got a fastball, and he'll hit the ball where it's thrown. And I think uh, that that interference call is the key. Usually, it's the umpire's judgment. I would think that Muffrey, with his speed, would have had a chance to score. Could have, I, I think, think he so. would have. Yep. Here's the bounce just inside the chalk, and right up into the waiting hands of a paying customer. Runners now, Mumphrey at third, Fanella at second for Bob Watson. Strike. Two out. No score. Now Watson has a history of hitting Royce very well when Bob was in the National League. Well, Bob hits everybody pretty well. He has a lifetime three, 300 batting average going into the season and has been extremely hot lately. Had some physical problems early in the year, did not get the at bats. There's his career average against Royce. That's foul. Mike Ferraro, the coach at first base for New York. Joe Altabelli, the coach at third base for the Yankees. Greg Nettles is in the on deck circle with two out, Mumphrey at third, and Fanella at second. pitch high fly ball hit well to right center field Monday going back to the fence leaps and it's gone so was gone and the pressure immediately on the Dodgers. There it goes. Just a fastball out over the plate, which is kind of where Watson likes the ball. He likes to get his arms extended, but as we said earlier, most strong hitters do. And what's funny, the flags are blowing to left field, and that ball carried very well. Nettle, it's a high fly ball to deep right. Mundy at the wall comes in and makes the catch. And so are the Yankees strike early on a three run home run by Bob Watson to lead it three nothing. New Backwoods Smokes just hit town. Looking wild but tasting mild. New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild Backwood Smokes, all natural tobacco, hand rolled look in a keep them fresh pocket pouch. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? On a summer's evening in 1924 in Lynn, Massachusetts, perhaps the most significant game in the long history of baseball was played. It wasn't the pitching that was so extraordinary, nor the hitting, and the fielding, well, it was less than exemplary. No, what made this game truly historic was the time of day. Nightfall. For it was on this night that this small group of GE engineers ushered in the era of night baseball. Baseball under the lights. While the names of Hugo Fee and Tommy Perkins and Hank Innes will never be recorded in the Hall of Fame, it was this earnest band of GE pioneers that made possible for us all the many brilliant nights to come. Ron Guidry stashed to a three to nothing lead on the mound. We asked Ron to characterize himself as a starting pitcher, how he sees his basic qualities. Well, I'd like to characterize myself and say that uh, after six years, I've become a good pitcher, uh, not just a thrower, like uh, I considered myself to be 77 and 78. Uh, I had a great fastball at that time, and uh, since I was new to the league, 
I just relied on overpowering a lot of uh, a lot of teams, most of the teams that I did pitch against. But over the last couple of years, uh, I've realized that you don't have to throw the ball hard all the time to get your out. So I've become a much better pitcher. Pre-game comments of Ron Guidry, who now will pitch to the middle of the Dodger order. Steve Garvey, Ron Say, and Pedro Guerrero. This is where the power is, primarily for Los Angeles, though you'd have to consider Dusty Baker as part of the power. But there's the man whose power gave New York a 3-0 lead in the bottom of the first inning. Of course, this puts tremendous mental pressure as well as physical pressure on the Dodgers, Jim. Well, the book on the Yankees is that you can't let them get ahead. And that's already happened. And, uh, they play six inning games. Well, I would think that they're going to have to get back into the game. And they, of course, as Keith said, have the three guys coming up. And they're all fastball hitters. Maybe I think there's a, the wrong impression about Steve Garvey. They handled him very well in 1978. He seemed to be very impatient, swinging at bad pitches. And everybody thinks he's a fastball hitter, but he's one of the best breaking ball hitters in the National League. You've got the secret to not throwing back to back home runs. After you throw a home run ball, you usually walk the next one. Uh, that's what Earl Weaver once told me. <laughs> Two and one. And there you see that hard slider. And, and that's the key. If you're going to beat Kidry, you can't swing at that pitch and you can't let him get ahead. You have to hit him either early in the count or. Or be patient, wait until he gets behind 2 and 0 and 3 and 1, and wait for the fastball. Pulled away from that one, there's Jerry Royce in the dugout. It was a called strike, so it's 2 and 2 now. Not for a long time had he thrown a three run home run ball, but he did against Montreal in game three to Jerry White. So it suddenly hit him twice. Shot off Nettle's glove. It was a bullet. Greg better check the webbing in his mitt after that one went through it. Garvey's aboard. First Dodger hit. Too much time to react on that ball. Still got a piece of it though. Well, when you hit quick. a ball that hard, you hit it with top spin. And the spin alone, it'll, it, unless you catch the ball really in, solidly in the web, it's going to make it go right into left field. Gidry is really uh, out of the first five hitters, or really four hitters, three of them hit the ball hard. Very sharply. Ron Say takes it low, ball one. Dodgers, I don't think, really understood how much Ronnie Say meant to them until he was hurt and was not there. The only one who didn't hit it sharply was Dusty Bate. High to the right side, Bob Watson with a play. Bobby calls off Randolph, makes the catch in fair ground, and you've got one out with Garvey at first base. Well, what's happened is that he has faced five batters, the three batters that hit the ball hard have all hit sliders. Baker and Say, who have popped up, have hit his fastball. So I think uh, either Sarone or Ron and Gidry should have gotten the message right now that his slider is not as good as it really can be. And uh, it seems to me they ought to the go moment. right to the fastball. His problem with it is probably location. Yes, when you throw them down the middle, the good hitters, and, and Dodgers have a lot of good right-handed hitters, you get a lot of trouble. Pee Wee Reese. Little turn. Strike one on Pedro Guerrero, who's been having some trouble with off-speed pitchers. Sprays that up in the crowd. Out of play. And Gidry at the edge of two strikes with one out, and Garvey at first base. Very impressive hit of this young man, Jim. Well, he can hit power the... in all directions. Exactly, and he's like most Latin players. They come up, they. He's a real good high ball hitter, and he and he jumps on the fastball. He, he he's done that many times in the playoffs, and, and like he said, he has problems with a good breaking ball. But there it was. That was the slider that Garvey would not chase. That's true, but the count was an 0-2 on Garvey. And here you see an 0-2 pat that makes the hitter a little more aggressive. It's a bad pitch for the hitter, but a good pitch for Gibbon. Rick Mundy, whose dramatic home run won for the Dodgers in Montreal yesterday. I would it'd be curious, and there's no way, of course, to ever know. 
for what the physics involved on a cold day of what 42 43 degrees hitting a baseball over the Santa Fe wall at Olympic Stadium. Well, it's kind of hard to do. I know we used to play in, in Chicago and they where they used to freeze the balls on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> the White Sox were happy because they had a great pitching staff. Monday hits it high back of the plate. Cerrone for a look. It's out of play. Only on Sunday. And holidays. I was talking to Rick and I. I said you should have been so surprised. He said he hit the ball yesterday and he never even saw where it went. And then he picked it up as he got around really between first and second base. And I said you almost fell down. He says yeah I was probably the happiest obviously the happiest time of this year. Well he actually the ball hung there so long he actually was rounding second before he picked it up and saw it go over the wall. So it must have been a tremendous club. One and one. He went up against Nepper. A fine left hander of Houston in that series and the Dodgers truly had their backs to the wall in that one. They lost two in Houston came home to win three. Monday had a 315 year one and one. It's up high. Well they've shown a lot of character. They've won when they had to. Well maybe that's their strategy to get behind and uh, allow the other team to become overconfident. Mm -hmm. Not with that <laughs> bunch out in that Yankee bullpen, I don't think. Forty. But they haven't done it by giving up three run home runs in the first inning. Right. Two one. Two two. Again the slayer. And he throws it hard. Harvey at first. Gidry's come up with another pitch, a changeup, which he's used effectively this year, but I think with a three run lead, he's going to go with his two best pitches. And right now, it seems to be the fastball and I would think in this situation he'd hate to get beat or hurt with a bad slider. Strikes out Monday so he fans Guero and Monday get say to pop out the first baseman the Dodgers get the leadoff man Garvey aboard on a single but they cannot move him around against Ron Girdry and after an inning and a half at Yankee Stadium New York three Los Angeles nothing. the time we've got the beer Miller beer Miller tastes too good to hurry through when it got the time Telephone credit card. The easy way to call. Easier than carrying a whole lot of change. You get a monthly record of your calls. Apply at your Bell business office for your free card. Mrs. Wilson. Hi, Mom. It's the newest Mrs. Wilson. All over the land, call soon as you can. Rick Cerrone to lead it off for New York. Larry Milburn will follow, and then Ron Gidry will come up for the first official at bat of 1981. Jerry Royce, with blue eyes, get a little hard after that swing by Bob Watson. He comes outside and high to Cerrone for ball one. The wind is blowing almost straight out to left. The home run by Watson, however, was hit to right center. Two balls and no strikes to Cerrone. Again, Larry Barnett of the American League is back at the plate. And the consistent comment throughout the course of the season was the strike zone is coming down in the American League. No Royce doubt Burns it. went in. You remain convinced of that. You heard you told that to Alfalfa Michaels on a Western <laughs> Divisional play. Well, the reason for that, of course, is that they, they've changed from the outside protector to the inside protector. Bill Russell, that shortstop, throws him out. Now it is Larry Milburn for New York, the shortstop. 
Swing and a foul. Or strike one. Question of, I guess, about Reggie Jackson, who has a pulled calf muscle. Not playing, not starting in the ball game, but he can come and swing the bat if needed. I think that amplifies, Jim, your comment about the effectiveness of the Los Angeles starters in the postseason play. Well, that's the reason they're here. I think right now, after Royce giving up the three runs, he's going to have to depend on his team to come back. And they're going to have to do it, as we've said before, early. Breaking pitch, and it's one and two. As we look down on Yankee Stadium, one has also, I think, uh, to wonder about the future of Milburn. Is he not uh, in line for the starter's job at shortstop as a result of his play? But Bucky Dent, of course, will give him plenty of competition, I'm sure, when the hand is well and spring comes again. One, two, pitch up the middle. Knocked down. Royce doesn't know where it is. Now finds it and gets it. And where did it hit him? Is he hurt? Says he's fine. Milburn so constant in his ability to make contact. Bill Bueller comes out to have a look at him, and you can see the shot back up the middle. Just a fastball in the middle of the plate. Up to him. Ow. Not too graceful, but I guess when you're that big, you, that's, that's the way you stop those kind of balls. I always try to get out of the way. <laughs> Got a lucky bounce, but still made an agile recovery. Pretty good throw, too. They'll let him have a couple of pitches to see if he's all right. Says so. Late umpire comes back on a cool as the night gets cooler, and it will. I presume that the pitchers will be allowed to blow on the throw again, will they not? Swings and misses, and Ron right now is in a relatively unfamiliar pose, standing at the plate. Yeah, but this guy's an athlete. You see his minor league average. He can fool you. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to do it right now, though. He may not. Uh, I know. He's totally, he is a great athlete. Gosh, I even saw you get a hit. I can't remember that, that far back. He made contact. Well, seriously, you know, you talk about... How if the, if the not having the DH is going to affect the Yankee hitters. I hadn't hit since 1972, and the first guy I got to face in the 1979 World Series was Bert Blylevin. Fly ball the warning track to me was a moral victory. I mean, I, I felt so wonderful about that, I almost tripped over first base watching. Slow curve strikes him out. So Jerry Royce gets the bottom third of the Yankee batting order in order, and after two innings, 3 nothing, New York. People trust Seiko technology for bold sports watches that perform brilliantly, even 100 meters beneath the sea. People trust Seiko for slim dress watches with every timekeeping function you'll probably ever need. People trust Seiko for watches that are as finely crafted as they are technologically advanced. In fact, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. At your authorized dealer. I'll try almost anything. So when Mattel Electronics asked me to compare their Intellivision games with Atari, I gave it a try. I compared Atari baseball with Intellivision and found Intellivision played much more like real baseball. Then I compared Atari football with Intellivision. Again, Intellivision played more like the real game. In my opinion, if you try them both, there's only one conclusion you can come to. Intellivision from Mattel Electronics. Marcus, I see <coughs> whisker. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. I trot. Next time, Jose, give it the pivot. Atra. The Gillette Atra razor pivots to continually adjust and hug every curve, contour, and angle. No other razor shaves closer and more comfortably than Atra. I give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Atra. Give it the pivot with Gillette Atra. 
I'm Irma Bombeck, and I've created a new comedy about Maggie, a devoted wife and mother. I wish you would not refer to your grandchildren as Cain and Abel. Meet Maggie, premiering Saturday. <laughs> Game two of the 1981 World Series will be played here at Yankee Stadium tomorrow night. 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. You'll see it here on ABC. And now for Los Angeles. Steve Yeager, the catcher. Jerry Royce, the pitcher. Davy Lopes, the top of the order. And as Yeg comes to the plate, wonders through my mind as to whether or not this may not be the last time we see him in a Dodger uniform because he does not like being a backup catcher. He wants to play for somebody somewhere. Mike Sosha has been the Dodger number one catcher. But Yeager's postseason record is impressive, and he takes strike one. That's the key. You remember, he hurt the Yankees back in 78. Well, he kept throwing him fastballs, and he's an excellent fastball hitter. And there you saw Gidry's third pitch, the one he's come up with this year, the straight changeup. The reason it's so successful, he throws so many fastballs. And here you see a picture of Greg Nettles. The reason he is such an excellent third baseman is the depth that he can play. What happens if they bunt? Well, that's what I've been saying since I saw him come into the league, but not too many teams do, and the Dodgers especially do not have a lot of guys that are, are excellent bunters. One, two, pitch, and Gidry has his third strikeout. Third consecutive strikeout. Well, you don't like to look at Nettles anyway. He's got more home runs against you than anybody else. Not this year. And here you'll see that slider ahead in the count. Jerry Royce. It's a good one, and they chase another bad pitch. That's the same pitch that if the count's 2-0, oh, you're not going to swing it, and he's not going to be throwing it. Yes, Nettles has hit me well in the past. There's no doubt about that. I, I, I've changed my game plan on him. What do you do now? Pitch around him. And <laughs> put up four, intentional walk, and pitch to Jackson. <laughs> Jerry Royce, a 196 hitter in the course of the season. And Gidra's first pitch to it is low for ball one. One and one. And here's the big difference between the leagues as far as I see it. It's been so long since I only faced eight hitters and a pitcher that it's got to be a lot easier. In fact, you never have an out man. Hitter and a pitcher in there, you almost they're almost giving you two innings of ball game. Uh, in the American League, you no longer have that because of designated hitter. Royce fouls it back to stay alive at one two. Might have had ten more career victories, or at least pitch a lot more innings, you win a lot more games, you maybe lose a lot more too because in fact you never have to be pinch hit for. Two and two is the pitch is outside and low. That's a lovely lady. The name, Rachel Robbins, widow of Jackie Roosevelt Robbins. Royce called out. Tried to check on it. Barnett says you went through it. And that's four straight strikeouts for Gidry. Here you see a fastball just off the plate inside. I'm not sure if Roy swing or not. You'll be able to see. back goes way around. Even looked like he asked for help. But the second baseman. That's what an umpire has to do if he doesn't really know. Four consecutive strikeouts. A little chilly, Dave? No. Hit sharply. Milburn backhands it and throws him out. And so the Dodgers are put away in order in the top of the third inning. After two and a half in game one of the World Series, New York leads it 3 nothing. We're Exxon. We're Bob Payne, manager of Exxon's test plant that's changing coal into liquid fuels. We're Adolphus Jones, who prepares the coal that's fed into the plant. Tommy Smith checking a sample of the experimental liquid fuel made from coal. We are more than 100,000 people working on energy. We are Exxon. One that has always puzzled me is why some people settle for the ordinary when they could have the extraordinary. 
Perhaps it causes simply lack of knowledge. Fortunately, I've never had that problem. So choosing a home videotape recorder was relatively easy. I chose the Sony Betamax, for when I observed how it performs so many complex technological functions with such ease and simplicity. I no longer saw a machine. I saw genius. The genius of Betamax, only from Sony. The unflappable one. <laughs> Bob Lemon. I walked up tonight visiting with him. You know what you want to talk about? Handicap. Think about next week. He's back on the links. Second time around for the Yankees now against Jerry Royce, Willie Randolph, Jerry Mumphrey, and Dave Winfield. Two balls and no strikes. Willie rolled out to Davy Lopes at second his first time. Royce's task is clear enough. He must contain them. He must hold them here. Not let the Yankees build up an insurmountable lead. Two and one. And you can see Willie Randolph, who we have said many times is a catalyst of this Yankees offense, doing what a leadoff man should, trying to th make the pitcher throw as many pitches as he can. Two and two now. Big contrast between Willie Randolph and Davey Lopes. 57 walks versus 22. Roller to Garvey at first. One out. In the bottom of the third inning. Now Mumphrey, who had singled and was bored when Watson hit the home run. The center fielder, Jerry Mumphrey. Side corner of the plate for a call strike. Dave Winfield is on deck. Beautiful pitch that was. Well, he's using his slow curveball a little bit more. I think. would think that uh, he's lost a little bit of confidence in his fastball when he's thrown it and made bad pitches with it. The ball's been hit hard, and a lot of times, if, if you're a seasoned veteran pitcher like Royce is, you'll go to another pitch, and that's what he's doing right now. Looked like a straight changeup, but it's the first yeah. one he's thrown. He had him off balance, check swing. He got Randolph on a check swing. So he's doing something down there. Changes of speed. Curve ball, hit to center, drops for a base hit. Humphrey now two for two. Speaking of Staten Island, Bambi, George Bamberger was named the manager of the New York Mets today. Turned down a three-year contract, said he only wanted for one let for one year. He proves that he can do the job and will automatically come to a longer term in assuming his health remains well. George never taught you the Staten Island sinker, huh, Jim? <laughs> no, I wish he had. <laughs> when you get up in age, you gotta cheat. No <laughs> doubt about it. I was going to cheat this year, and then they changed the rules. You couldn't <laughs> scuff up the ball or do anything like that. At least I contemplated cheating. High drive, left field. Baker going back, going back, and makes the catch on the track. Winfield just missed it. Just missed it. Mumphrey goes back to first. Somebody threw a frisbee out on the field as Dusty was going back to make the catch. That's out of a lot of other places, Jim. Well, no doubt about it, when you look at Dave Winfield's power statistics, 13 on the year, this is why. Is that a Frisbee? It's a bottle. It's not a Frisbee at all. I thought when I first saw it, it was a Frisbee. It turns out to be a bottle, and now Tom Lasorda is out. And with no uncertainty at all about what he's talking about. He is absolutely right. Look at it again. There's just not any room for that in this game. We had one of our pitchers, Dennis Martinez, hit in the head in Chicago with a, a beer bottle. There's no sense talking any longer about sickos like them. It's a matter for immediate arrest, prosecution, period. Castillo is up now in the Los Angeles bullpen. Boba Castillo. The runner goes. The pitch gets away from Yeager. And Mumphrey slides into second base. Two out. 
off, and there's Castillo warming up in the Dodger pen. Dennis was scared to death, wasn't he? Well, that's a frightening thing to happen, especially Fear when you have blindness. So. Well, George Steinbrenner has added uh, an enormous amount of security to the force here. A few nitwits still get in, don't they? Vanilla hit the double, bounced, ball bounced up into the stands for a ground rule double his first time. There's Mumphrey coming off second base. Yank is a leading three to nothing and batting in the bottom of the third inning. That's foul. Again, Royce went to the off speed pitch. with Captain Don Bully out of Dallas the pilot and our cameraman is Billy Sell. Pretty picture. Clear night. And the count is one two on Vanilla sharply to left field. They set Muff returns third. He's coming home and the throw goes into second. The Yankees lead it four to nothing. Matthew of course hear them saying low low low. And here you'll see a high breaking ball looks like a curveball that you don't want to throw it belt high. He doesn't have a hit the ball that hard, but it's a ball up in the strike zone. A good pitch for a hitter to hit. But as you noted earlier, such a professional hitter. He went to right when pitched there. He went to left. He can go anywhere in the ballpark. Use the whole place. And Castillo begins to throw with more purpose in the Dodger bullpen. They appeal at third. Third base umpire says, nope. He hit the bag, Doug Harvey. Showing right there where he hit it. Lasorda coming out of the dugout, headed for the mound. Castillo warming up rapidly in the Dodger bullpen. So we've got a timeout for the moment. This telecast presented by Authority of Major League Baseball, intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of the game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Now we can look at the slow motion. Right, As you look at the slow motion, you will see Mumphrey go around and go right on that bag. No question about it, the corner of it. He almost tripped as he rounded the bag. Lasorda has waved for a reliever. He had enough, not just on the basis of Pinella's single, but he got a scary lesson with Winfield's blast out past the 387 foot mark, closer to 390 or 395. Baker getting it with his back to the wall. So Royce departs. There's another angle touching the corner of the bag, as you could see. So while we wait for Castillo, Bobby Castillo, to come in in relief of Jerry Royce, we've got a timeout, and we'll be back in a moment. Want to know four ways to help get better gas mileage? Tell us, Mr. Goodrich. First, air up. Keeping tires at recommended pressure can help save up to a gallon of gas per tank. Next, tune up. That can help save up to two gallons. Wow! Then, clean up. Get new filters. And slow up. You can go farther on a tank full. Keep that great GM feeling. Thanks a tank full, Mr. Goodrich. With genuine GM parts. Guess what I've got in here? What? A piece of the sun. No wonder I can't get a tan. It's Polaroid's new sun camera. A new system that can turn bad light into good pictures. Here, go ahead, take my picture. You know it'll be dark. Nope. You've never been so sure of an instant picture. Great, but doesn't this cost a lot? No, but wasting film in bad light does. Besides, you never buy flash or extra batteries. The sun looks the same. Where'd they take the piece from? The other side. You've never been so sure. Welcome to our people-pleasing places. Good luck. Holiday Inn makes me feel like a winner. That's why my team chooses Holiday Inn. 
No surprises. Beds always comfortable, always. Big rooms. And as a Holiday Inn hotel near just about everywhere we play. Well, let's go call them like we see them. You have to see them to call them. Holiday Inn is number one in people pleasing. Saturday, NCAA college football action as Nebraska attacks Missouri in a Big 8 battle. Minnesota tackles six-ranked Iowa, plus other regional games, Saturday on ABC. There are the numbers on Bob Castillo coming out of the bullpen for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He did not have a particularly good year. I think the earned run average reflects that as much as anything. So while he warms up, there's the commissioner, Boyd Kuhn, in his box. Still without a coat. Of course, tonight you don't need it. Quite comfortable. If, of course, you have a your woolies on. <laughs> Yankees in these playoffs continue to show their enormous depth. Vanilla, an example tonight. Jackson out. Right man, right place, right time. And what about this battle? Watson, three run homer in the first inning. Castillo delivers, and it's low for ball one. Incidentally, and having uh, taken a look at the commissioner, today is the 25th anniversary. And we congratulate him. Four to nothing Yankees. The runner goes, and Yeager has no chance. He's going to let off Castillo. Lou Pinella steals the base. I tell you, it's news. He had an enormous lead on Castillo. Bubba would never looked at him. Well, you, you have to give the catcher a chance. And both stolen bases this inning, this inning have been on the first move by the pitcher. And if you don't change your cadence over there and you don't uh, step off every once in a while and you don't throw over there, you never give your catcher a chance. And Jaeger throws well. He throws almost as well as anybody in the National League. And you can't allow them to get runners in scoring position, especially with a guy like Bob Watson up there. I think it's an interesting move by Tommy Lasorda. Jerry Royce had pitched three clutch games down the stretch, all with three days rest, which is not the normal four in between. And you hate to come out of a ball game, but I have gone back to many seasons where every once in a while you need to get knocked out of a game to get a little bit of rest. And if the Dodgers are going to come back and win this series, not that this game is over with or anything like that, they're going to need a strong Jerry Royce. And it might be the best thing in the world for him and the Dodgers. Castillo walks. Watson. In the meantime, he doesn't put in Welch this early and in the first game of the series because he'd be using him up for a time he might need him very quickly later in the series. Great. Now it's Greg Nettles. He just missed one off Royce. With a fly ball to right. And Rick Mundy caught on the warning track. You've got two out. He's leading four to nothing. And Nettles fouls it back. Pretty good swing. Of course, this is the kind of pitch that Nettles likes to hit, a fastball out over the plate. I'll tell you, when he gets in a groove, as you know, he is terribly dangerous. Well, he is a streak hitter and uh, had a great series against Oakland in the American League Championship Series. That's low, one and one. And that's that screwball. Couple of young men right there who have, would seemingly have a long future in New York. On the left, that's Dave okay, Rigetti. Dave. Both Dave's. Dave Winfield. Rigetti, too. Well, that Rigetti was something in Milwaukee. Yeah, he's First been time. something all year. He has the look of a superstar. Rigetti. Rigetti. I have not seen any better young pitchers in the league. I mean, he's young. He has great poise, great arm. Nettles checks on it. Two balls and one strike. All of the damage has been done by the Yankees with two out. Watson's three-run homer with two out. <laughs> That's what we talked about that a while ago. Only nine. Gee, it seems like in the 20s. 39, does it? <laughs> well, none in the last two years. He hits them with such authority. Splinters flying all over the place. Crash of thunder. 2-1. <laughs> it up coming back out of play he was looking for that Jim well, again it was the fastball and 
when you go up to the plate and you get the count to two and zero, oh, three and one, two and one, like that pitch, you think that you know what's coming, even though you may not ultimately get get what you're looking for. Just gives you a lot more confidence. And really, what Lasorda is doing, Castillo, Castillo, as he said, did not have an exceptionally good year. He's hoping that he'll come in and pitch well tonight. Give give the rest of his bullpen a rest and hope that the Dodgers can get back into into this game. 2-2 pitch to Nettles. Fouled away again. That was not a good swing. Here's Greg's wife, Ginger. Dodger wives are all here. Second, Watson at first, and the 2 2 pitch just inside. Dodgers again have activity in the bullpen. It is Dave Goltz now up and throwing for Los Angeles. The free agent who had a dismal year for them. Big right hand. The runners move, and the pitch is fouled away. He has also spoken quite freely of the fact that he does not expect to be in a Los Angeles uniform next year. 3 2 pitch for Nettles. Center field in play. It is Rick Monday. And he makes the catch. And the Yankees strand two. But they lead after three, four to nothing. Hi. Uh, I'm William Catt, the greatest American hero. But keep it kind of quiet. I'm still trying to work on it. But Lee Majors has got it down. He's Hollywood's greatest stuntman, The Fall Guy. The season premiere of The Greatest American Hero and The Fall Guy. Make October 28th the hottest Wednesday ever. Yo! Two right here. Big Bob Watson, who had the big blow in the ball game. This so far, a three-run home run. Before the ball game, Howard talked with Big Bobby. If Georgie Pochi traded you, would you retire? You've indicated to me that you would. Well, the, that is something that uh, I've considered. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've played uh, most of my career on a second division club, and I don't see any reason why I should uh, end up my career on a second division club. Uh, I haven't talked to George. Uh, my man Tom Rich is in town. Uh, to talk to him on some other matters, and I'm quite sure that's going to be a topic of discussion also. Uh, one of the things that uh, I would love to, to do is uh, stay with the Yankees. I came with the intentions of staying here. I didn't ask for a no trade, but um, I would love to, you know, to stay a Yankee and finish out my career here. Some comments of Bob Watson, who's in the business making cowboy boots. Jerry Klein's wearing a pair of you wearing them because it makes him taller. You make 14. Aren't you? <laughs> Bill Russell, Dusty Baker, and Steve Garvey are the scheduled Dodger hitters now as Ron Guidry comes up for the top of the fourth inning with New York leading four to nothing. Coming up on Saturday, NCAA football, Nebraska and Missouri, the Huskers and the Tigers down in Columbia. And the Golden Gophers of Minnesota will take on the Iowa Hawkeyes of Hayden Fry and just try to find out how good those Hawkeyes are. They shut down Michigan last week for a 9-7 victory. So Hayden and his Hawks are something in 1981. Bill Russell comes on, rolled out of the shortstop his first time. The shortstop... Bill Notice that index finger is still now he's not able to wrap it securely around the bat. It's sort of extended. And the first pitch from Gidry is low for ball one. That finger
finger was really smashed. They had to rebuild it. Almost miraculous the way Bill was able to come back and throw with accuracy. Foul back, and it's one and one. Well, really, I think there's any criticism about his shortstop playing ability. It is his throwing, and I'm sure probably the finger has something to do with that. A little erratic on his throws every once in a while. And Garvey saves a lot of them coming up with dust on the first base. That's a slow roller for Nettles at third on the move. One out. And now Dusty Baker, who popped out to the second baseman, Willie Randolph, his first time. Been a solid player all year. Been a solid player for several years for that matter, but this may have been his best year. Rips it to left, base hit. That is only the second base hit for the Dodgers. But they know they've got to get something going now. Pretty soon, it becomes six innings gone by, and then you face Ron D and Double G. Steve Garvey had a single off Nettles' glove, a line shot Greg flailed at, but had literally no chance of getting. Well, you have to wonder about Gidry. As long as he's gone in his last five outings, his four innings, and even though they do have the guys in, in the bullpen to come in, Davis and Gossage. Baker goes, Garvey fouls it down the right side out of play. So a little they'll get back into the game, you know, before before they can go to the bullpen. Well, that's the point you made at the very beginning of the telecast that Gidry is suspect with you. And based upon recent performances, it's understandable. Plus the fact the Dodgers now have got to start moving around. They can't stand out there and wait. Sometimes uh, things won't happen unless you put a little pressure on. Well, Tommy Lasorda said that he didn't expect it in Yankee Stadium to come up with a whole lot of big innings, so he was going to try to hit run. A 1 1 pitch. Garvey hits it in the air to center field. Mumphrey goes back for it as a bead and makes the catch. And Baker has to return to first base. Two down. Gentry now has thrown 46 pitches to the plate. As Tom Lasorda shouts out of the dugout, Ron Say walks in for Los Angeles here in the top of the fourth. Ronnie came back from that broken forearm and just started rattling base hit right out of the box. He said it really didn't bother him at all. He just reverses that, that arm thing when he's when he's out on the field because he catches so many balls in front of him. Panella has a little struggle with the wind on that high fly ball to right field, but handles it. And so in the middle of the fourth inning, the Yankees lead it four to nothing. Oh, a once in a lifetime play. But I've got an instant replay forever on my RCA convertible video recorder. It's really two VCRs in one. It records my TV favorites and it converts to a portable home movie outfit so I can record Moose's big place too. The RCA convertible. Two VCRs are better than one. No one gives you more VCR than RCA. There's a company in Toledo, Ohio who makes an amazing product for your car's engine. It can help improve your car's mileage, give you surer starts, even help your car run better. And the cost of a set is about the same as the price of an oil change. A revolutionary new device? No, it's a fresh champion spark plug. There is probably nothing that can do so much for your car's engine for so little. Champion, the world's number one seller. All right, children. Who's going to be the first one to recite the alphabet? How about you, Anne? A, B, C, D, E F E F E F Hutton. When E F Hutton talks, people listen. 
Yankees win this game. Scoring summary, first inning, Mumphrey single, Pinella double, two out, Watson, three-run home run. Yankees led it three to nothing. And then in the third inning, Mumphrey a single, stolen base, stole it off the pitcher, and then Pinella delivers a two-out single, and that's where we are. Four-nothing, New York. Sitting there in the back wearing the glasses is Jimmy Cackney, James Cackney. And some of you, I'm sure, probably read that uh, George Steinbrenner had wanted him to throw out a ball, the, the ceremonial first pitch, and he was reminded by the commissioner's office uh, that politicians and uh, actors and such uh, personalities are generally not uh, accorded that honor. Rick Cerrone, Larry Milburn, and Ron Guidry. The sign you viewers just saw spoke for itself with regard to Mr. Cagney. I suspect that he will participate in the proceedings tomorrow. Pitch is high from Castillo to Cerrone. Two balls and no strikes. There is the Yankee clip. He did throw out the first pitch. Cerrone to the shortstop his first time up. Looks, and it's inside. Three balls and no strikes. Castillo in relief of Royce. Jerry went two and two-thirds, four earned runs, five hits, struck out two and walked nobody. And Cerrone's aboard. Yankees well-rested. They closed out the Shortstop. American League Championship Series last Thursday with a three-game sweep over the Oakland A's. The Dodgers were rained out one day in Montreal and had to finish up yesterday and then came in here. Larry Milbert in the Yankee dugout. Castillo has thrown 17 pitches now to three-plus batters. So he's been struggling himself, and once again, we get activity in the Los Angeles bullpen. Looks like Dave Gold's getting up again. Well, when Castillo's had problems in his career, it's, it's always been because of his wildness. He's not exactly getting out in front of these hitters. Back it goes to Castillo. Second for one. Over to first. No. They get the lead runner, Cerrone. Pitcher to the shortstop, but Miss Milburn at first. And here you'll see a good hard slide. I'm not so sure that this was as, as important as Milburn's speed. You'll just see him outrun the ball. And as you said, Howard, he's been very important in, in the Yankees' success in the last couple of weeks. Up at the plate, Gidry tries to lay it down and can't do it. With one out. problem you had in 79 you couldn't bunt because you hadn't been doing it right Jim no no, no. I could no. <laughs> I never had a chance <laughs> say well in it third they're still looking but and he fouls it off Jaeger trying to come back for the little pop Steve couldn't get to it Steve Yeager's a bit of a miracle, too, in that uh, the night the bat split stuck in his throat in San Diego, and that is what brought on that flap that hangs on the bottom of the catcher's masks and a lot of the umpire's masks. Terrifying moment. And I would imagine we'll see Gidry bunt again on the two strikes on it. Don't try. Gets it down this time. Castillo out. Can't go to second. Rose Gidry out at first. And the crowd gives one a hand. Two down now, and they've got Milburn at the turn for Willie Randolph. The second baseman, Willie Randolph. up for the third time. Hitless. Pitch pretty close. Castillo took a good long look. 
That was a high slider. And <clears throat> again, you can see Larry Barnett with the inside protector, and you'll see how low he gets down. You see the center field shot. Just two years ago, he had the outside protector, and he just can't get as low, and that's the reason the strike zone is has gone down. And the umpires, the new umpires, have to wear the inside protector in the American League. The older ones, like Larry, have an option. See, he's down on one knee. And Castillo's high. Randolph's power alley, right center. That's it. pretty much where Guerrero's got him played, too. So well, he's a step over to right. Swirls around inside this big old hole. Willie Whitfield, a high pitch, missed it two and one. It's confusing to me how Willie Randolph can hit 232 over the course of the season. He had one of those years. Willie says he hit in bad luck, that he was really hitting the ball well. Does a lot of right things at the plate. I mean, it makes you throw strikes. It's an excellent fastball. Hitter. You're going to get him out, you're going to get him out with breaking balls. That one away. Of course, the owner doesn't agree with it. <laughs> Game number one of the 1981 World Series at Yankee Stadium. Yanks on top four to nothing and batting in the bottom of the fourth inning. The big blow in the ball game, a three run home run of the first inning by Bob Watson. 2-2 pitch to Randolph. Up high. Full. 3-2. Dave Goats continues to throw in the Los Angeles bullpen. Humphrey on deck. He's two for two. Stolen base. Troublesome hitter tonight. Troublesome all year hitting 3-0-7. So Castillo is high. He's faced six batters now, Jim, and uh, he's thrown 27 pitches. Well, I think what happens, Keith, when you get behind in the ball game, you know you can't give up any more runs, and you become a little bit finer. You try to make perfect pitches, and that might be all right if you're a starting pitcher or you have excellent control, but Castillo, as we said before, has always had trouble with control, and you just can't do that. Tries to come on the outside corner with a screwball and misses, and there's Fernando Valenzuela. It was uh, Castillo who taught Fernando an awful lot about the screwball. At this point in time, Fernando can teach Castillo much. True. It's inside. So Bobo is digging himself a hole. You've got Milburn out at second. You've got Randolph at first. You've got two out, and all of the damage by the Yankee bats has been done with two out tonight. Three balls and no strikes. On deck, Mr. David Winfield. He almost put one out of here, his last trip to the plate. There is the angular one. Simply as they now understand in both leagues, a superb all around athlete. That he is. Made one of the greatest catches I've ever seen. About three rows up in the left field seats. The bases are now loaded. comes to the mound for the Los Angeles Dodgers and oh how Tom Lasorda would like to have that big left hander in the bullpen again. Castillo just cannot get that the good pitch in the strike zone. He's becoming frustrated. George Steinbrenner's box the most photographed private box in the history of sport the last 10 days. Whatever he does, they win after he does it. All right, it's 
A lot of marbles and chalk rolling around right now as Winfield steps in with the bases loaded. 4 nothing, New York. Two out. And the heat of the moment is square on the strong shoulders of Bob Castillo. Low ball one. Well, it looks to me he's trying to make every e effort to try to find his control. A lot of times uh, you become stubborn out there on the mound. You, you can't control your fastball, so you just stay with it. He's thrown his slider. He's thrown a screwball. He just threw a curveball. He's thrown his fastball, and he really can't or hasn't had success with any of it. That pitch was a closer pitch than the action of uh, Winfield might suggest. There's young Tom Needenfuhr now, up and throwing at the bullpen. He's a youngster who came on a double A ball. Hard thrower. It'll be interesting to see what he throws 2 0. and no strikes. 34 pitches now. Mark Castillo. He has not been effective. 3-0. Are they going to let Big David go? I would think so. Mm. Nope. It's caught. The inside corner. Don't see how you could do that, Keith. Such an uncertain pitcher. Fourth ball. You've got to run. Hate to take a look at this one. But you'd be surprised how many can be walking four straight pitchers. The next batter will come up and swing at the first one. One walks in, and that'll do it for Castillo. Five nothing, New York. Time called as Tom Lasorda is going to change pitchers right here. We'll be back. Gamma rays probe. Laser beams scan. Robots perform incredible feats in the creation of Chevrolet Cavalier. Masterminded for remarkable precision. Dedication to detail. Exactness of fit. And consistent quality. Chevrolet Cavalier. Mastery of mind over matter. Now get bigger savings with even lower 12.9% financing. This is radiator rust. It's building up after just 10,000 miles on weak, neglected antifreeze. Now look at a radiator protected with new, improved Prestone 2, same 10,000 miles. Quite a difference. Introducing the new silicone silicate formula Prestone to lock out rust and corrosion in all metals. Now it's even stronger for better aluminum protection. New, improved Prestone 2. The best seller just got better. No wonder we're number one. Day is long and your work is hard. And your boots say acne. Your boots say acne. Your boots say acne. Your boots say acne. The real whisk. The great spectacle of the New York City Marathon. 16,000 attack over 26 grueling miles of New York pavement with defending champ Alberto Salazar promising a new world record. And on ABC Sports Beat, Howard Cassell one-on-one -on -one with the man behind the success and turmoil of the New York Yankees. George Steinbrenner, Patton in pinstripes. Plus, a look at the striking beauty who might just be the best lady golfer in the world. Sports Beat and Sports Beat, Sunday on ABC. Dave Goltz has now come on, the third Los Angeles pitcher. Royce started, went two and two-thirds. Castillo relieved, and uh, Bob Castillo faced eight batters. Went to a three-ball count six times, threw 36 pitches, and walked five. So he obviously didn't last very long. The Yankees are hitting, run having come home on the walk to Dave Winfield to make it a 5 nothing ball game. And the numbers you saw on Dave Goltz. Now, he was one of the fellows who came to the Dodgers as a free agent, paid a lot of money for him. He just had a bad year. He's going to have to pitch now to Lou Pinella with two out and the base is still loaded. He's had two bad years in a row as you look at him, and he's a most disconsolate fellow. 
talked with him in the dugout before the game and now there's something almost apologetic in his behavior because of his own disappointment in himself. Tomorrow night we'll have game number two of the 1981 World Series here at Yankee Stadium, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. And the scheduled pitchers are Tommy John and Bert Putin for the Yankees and Dodgers respectively. The last appearance of Dave Goltz was October 4. That's the final game of the regular season. So now, let's set the base runners for you. Willie Randolph is over at third. Jerry Mumphrey is at second. Dave Winfield is at first. And the batter is Lou Pinella, who has doubled and singled. Scored a run and stolen a base. And for Goltz to be successful, he has to, he has a fairly good fastball, but not overpowering, and he has a knuckle curveball. And I would think that in the National League, where you do have a little bit smaller strike zone, he would not be as effective because of that reason. They're not, not calling that many pitches. This is Penella. He's got the kind of composure her husband has. She's grown accustomed to his ability to hit. Well, Lou's up there. I mean, he only hit five home runs this year, and he knows he can hit home runs in the Yankees. Very often, he's just going to go with the pitch. He's the type of hitter you throw one pitch, you throw a fastball like that inside. You think you got him set up, and I think he really has you set up. He's really a thinking hitter. He said the only catcher in the league he can't think with is Rick Dempsey in an R-ball club. He said he's too confused, never know what he's going to call. Well, there's no question your ball club is the toughest club for the Yankees to beat. They're more respectful of your club, perhaps, than any other club in baseball. Well, we have had very good success. Little Looper Lopes races back, makes the catch, and the Yankees strand three. But they do get another run. And so, after four, the Yankees five, the Dodgers nothing. Trust the leader in technology to forge a new legend, Seiko LaSalle. Trust Seiko to fuse slim elegance and peerless performance. New Seiko LaSalle. Trust Seiko to create timepieces destined for a place among the world's great possessions. Seiko LaSalle. Miracles of slimness. Marvels of technology. No wonder people trust Seiko more than any other watch. Seiko as your authorized dealer. I do one thing. I kick this ball through those two poles. Do one thing all the time to get to be great. Like Kentucky Fried Chicken. They don't try to do everything. Just chicken and no one else does it tender and juicy the Colonel's way. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it right for you. I do kicking right. They do chicken right. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Now there's a place where they have their own authorized mechanics, quality parts and service, and prices you can afford. Now there's K-Care, found only at Kmart. Why not change to the tire you don't have to change? The KM Special Radial, with two fiberglass belts and aggressive tread design, goes through rain, mud and snow, yet rides smooth on highways. Now the KM Special is sale priced as low as $31.97. Hey, we'll even rotate them every 5,000 miles at no charge. That's K-Care, only at Kmart. America, the girls are back. How about you coming down to my room a little later? Play ball! And they're pouring on the laughs in the season premiere of the all-new Making a Living. All right, we'll move to the top of the fifth inning. Guerrero, Monday, and Yeager for Los Angeles. Gidry's still out there. He's allowed the Dodgers only two hits so far in the ball game, and he's sitting on a big, fat five-run lead. Five zip. The only thing he has to worry about is that he doesn't change his pitching pattern. Guerrero's his first batter. He got ahead of him with fastballs and then throwing the breaking balls. A lot of times, pitchers will, because they have a big lead, go away from the pattern that has been their success earlier in the ball game. So it'll be interesting to see if, if he basically goes with his fastball that's been successful the last two or three innings. Well, Pedro has struggled in the postseason. There is no question about the numbers to tell you the story. He's 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 not balanced. He's just not been the same. He has not swung the bat with the 
smooth velocity that he showed during much of the regular season. Strike one. Well, of course, he's also seen some excellent pitching. The Houston Astros. And of yep. course, Montreal has an excellent pitch. Get into staff. five double plays against Montreal. That'll send you home talking to yourself. He's a good, strong youngster who's going to be around a while. Ball is hit pretty well to center field. Mumphrey's on his horse. Jerry going back. He hit it well, but he hit it to just about the deepest part of Yankee Stadium. Death Valley out there, and you've got one out. Mumphrey, who's a naturally fine fielder, has had his own troubles in center field on different occasions here at Yankee Stadium this year. I think it's the toughest center field in the league, don't you? Well, not only is it the biggest, it's also very uneven. You're yep. running out there during the pregame drills and climbing them out. Well, up and down and uneven. Very hard. You know, remember, Jim, you were in the other league, old Crossley Field, and the hill they had going up to the fence. Cincinnati. You don't know about an outfield until you played at Sulphur Dell in Nashville, where you had literally had to run up a terrace. And more hamstrings pulled, guys going up that confounded thing than you can think about. That's where you peaked out as a ball player. <laughs> Rick Mundy is up. Mundy struck out swinging his first time. Dodgers are up in the top of the fifth inning. They've been pretty quiet so far. Still has his velocity at 90 plus miles an hour. He hasn't thrown that many pitches. Really? No, he hasn't. Excellent control, not a walk. He hasn't gone to a three ball count on anybody. Sharply spiked. Great play, Randolph. Now look what I found one hopper for the second down. One of those you do it or you don't. And that's exactly what it was. Look what I found. Backhanded. Took an upward bounce Steve right Jacobs. into Willie's glove. Steve Jacobs. That's what they call soft hands. <laughs> <laughs> or luck. I think luck. <laughs> Just a high fastball in the middle of the plate. Hit hard. But the balls that have been hit hard have been caught tonight. Jaeger hits it high in the air to the right side. The vanilla oh. going back to the wall. Quietly, Jaeger gets the Dodgers a run, and he continues with his exceptional postseason hitting. He's hurt the Yankees before. Boy, you don't think that big guy isn't happy about that? Ho, ho, ho. Here's Steve Sachs coming to the plate now, a young man who played second base for Los Angeles through much of the second half of the season. And he steps in as the hitter in the pitcher spot. Ladies and gentlemen. That means Needon Fewer is still in the pen warming up, and he'll be the next one for well, the Dodgers. Number 52. This is a youngster, I guess, that everybody around the Dodger organization figures is going to succeed Davy Lopes at second base. He's a dandy. I think that was the most silent home run I've ever yeah. heard in the World <laughs> Series. Nothing. Sachs hits it high in the air to center field. Wynn seems to grab it and hang it. And Mumphrey makes the catch. And the inning is over. But the Dodgers get on the board with Yeager's home run. 5-1. Middle of the fifth. Back with more after this word from our local station. Thursday, it's a honeymoon that's out of this world. No more poking. When Mork and Mindy visit Ork. Nano, nano. Doesn't he look amazing like Elton John? Then Sam Best goes undercover to save Tillman's neck. A fella could get killed up here. On Best of the West. You're going to punish me for what I did? That's right, Adam. What are you going to do? Come into my bed for a week? No, that's not it. Put me on bread and water till I starve? No, it's something much worse than that. You're not going to make me kiss my sister. No, that's not it either. I'm not going to let you watch television for a week. Mom, there's some fear. 
was cruel and inhuman treatment. There are times you just want to watch a little television. And it's our job at the Hearst Corporation to bring it to you. We're in the communications business. If you can watch it, hear it, or read it, chances are Hearst is involved in it. We inform you, entertain you, challenge you. We talk to millions of you one at a time. How could she be so mean? I'm only a kid. Tonight after the game, we'll have live reaction to what looks like a big Yankee win, and there has been a bloody shootout in Rockland County. Several people dead. Details coming up later. Richard Simmons, tomorrow morning at 9. Big right-hander out there now, and I mean big, 6'5", 220. Tom Needenfewer, he is the fourth Los Angeles pitcher. Started his uh, professional career in San Antonio in the Texas League. And was 13 and 3 with five saves in 37 ball games, striking out 95 in 90 innings. Up he came. Bob Watson will be the first man he'll pitch to. Greg Nettles and Rick Cerrone to follow. So the Dodger pitchers have been rattled around some tonight. Actually, Castillo wasn't hit much. He just walked by. Goltz came in and pitched to third. Royce was tapped for a three-run homer by Bob Watson. In a lot of ways, uh, Jim Palmer, this big right-hander, sort of reminds me of your big guy, Stoddard, when Tim first came up and got involved in your bullpen. There's the New York City Marathon coming up on Sunday, 10.30 Eastern. The rest of the time's reflected there, followed by College Football 81 and ABC Sports Beat. And what you going to do this Sunday? Well, the public's going to spend some time with Patton and Pinstripes, our name for George Steinbrenner, <laughs> the Yankee owner. And then they'll meet the fair lady of the fairways, Jan Stevenson, who is now playing the best golf on the women's tour, but who, according to Jim Palmer, may be the most beautiful woman in the Chronicle of Sports. Ever since she did the cover shot for Inside Sports with me, she's been hot. <laughs> Needham here got to strike on Watson. Hard thrower, has got a fastball and a slider. Again, I, he's not what you'd call a finesse pitcher. He's coming after him. Bangs one in there low to make it one and one. He's a uh, out of my old alma mater, Washington State. The other, there are two Cougars on that Dodger club, Ron Sabe and the other one. Sharply hit, just past the glove of a stretching Davy Lopes. Bob Watson is wearing him out tonight. He's hit a three run home run and he's walked. Both his hits have come on fastballs out over the plate. Yep. And, and that's not exactly the book on, on Bob Watson. If you're going to get him out with a fastball, you have to keep it on the inside part of the plate. Look out for this fellow now. Look out. Needon Fuhrer is a youngster. He hasn't been around very long. He's still got a lot to learn about the craft. I must say that recent scuffle, widely publicized at the time, between Nettles and Jackson, after the victory over Oakland has totally subsided around the Yankee clubhouse. These old pros simply don't attribute that much importance to it. High fly ball to the right side. Rick Mundy has room. Oh, he just missed another one. He's been under it three times. All three times he has hit a high fly ball to Rick Mundy in right field. One out. And here's a high fastball out over the plate. He dives in, has a good swing. It tells you what kind of stuff Neatenshire has. Just popped him up. Well, kind of a long pop. Bet you Reg would like to come up and take a whack at this big right-hander. All right. Sharon now. With one out and a man on first, Bob Watson. Eden Fuhr is in there with a strike. He can bring it. Pops him up. Billy Russell, the shortstop, drifts back. And Bill makes the catch for the second out. 
One of the old great hitters, batting instructor would look at him, even that, teaching for the Dodgers. Danny Moda began with San Francisco. What a hitter. Only 150 pinch hits. That's all. Through all the years. I'll bet you he could come up there and still do it. Of course he could. And watch him in the cage, how he just reaches out and strokes that thing. Larry Milburn goes to the other side against the right-hander. With two out, and Watson on first base, hits it to say at third. Ronnie goes the short way, and the inning is over. So the Yankees get Watson on base, but they can't move him along as Needham Fewer comes in to get him. And we've played five now with the Yankees on top by a score of five to one. Okay. There are some who say Steinbrenner, the Yankee owner, is impossible to get along with. But there are others who seem always able to get along with the Yankee owner. And one of those is the present manager, Bob Lemon. We talked about it. What about you yourself? You seem to have a very rare ability, the ability to get along with Georgie Porgy. Well, he's been very good to me. Uh, I have no squawks, and uh, he lets me run the ball club. He makes suggestions, and if, if I think they warrant use, well, I use them. If they don't, well, I don't use them. What about your future as the Yankee manager? So much written about you as an interim manager, so much talk about Dick Williams. What is your future in your mind, and does all of the talk unsettle you? It doesn't unsettle me. I still have another year to go on my contract. And I read in the paper today that George has talked to some other people and said, I am his boy, I'll be back. But uh, those things don't bother me because uh, uh, I know that when you're manager, certain things can happen and I could be back in Long Beach before the first snow falls. <laughs> but you'll be in my golf tournament. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> and I'll be in George's heart. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be in what, George's heart? Heart. <laughs> well, there may be some question whether he has one. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm only joking. Only kidding. I admire him. He played by the rules and built a very successful dynasty. All right, top of the sixth. Lead off man. Russell. Baker. Garvey. Say, let's see if they can get back in this game. Because next inning, it becomes R.D. and G.G. time. Gidry comes to Lopes. Swing and a miss for a strike. Davey has bounced to the third baseman. He didn't exactly bounce, did he? Greg bounced when he fielded the hot shot down the line and threw him out. And he bounced out of the shortstop, Milber. Pitches outside to make it one and one. Gidry, through five innings, having gone through the lineup twice, has thrown only 54 pitches. Up the middle it goes. Randolph backhands it. Another nice play by Willie. You talk about what makes a good pitcher. It's good defense playing the hitters where they're going to hit the ball. Randolph shading up the middle. Doesn't have to go that far, but still makes a fine play. And a and an excellent throw. One out for Bill Russell. But note the economy of pitches by Guidry. Russell hits it in the air to the right side. Lou Pinella coming toward the line. Two down. That's getting them out in a hurry, James. Well. When you get five runs on the board early and you have a five to one lead, you have a little bit more confidence. You go after them. I'm sure if, this, if the score was tied, you'd be a little bit finer, maybe trying to make a little bit better pitch. But right now, they're trying to be aggressive. They're trying to get back in the game by getting a big inning, and that usually means we're swinging for home runs. Baker in tonight's ball game has popped up to second and single to left. Very quiet ball game. Ball one. Up to this point, Yankees totally commanding. Rerun, home run. 
very first inning by Bob Watson. Two balls and no strikes. Yeah, maybe Dusty can sit on a pitch. Also, maybe you take him. Only Dodger run. Jaeger's home run. It fell over the right field fence. Three balls and no strikes. And this is the first time in the ball game that Ron Guidry has gone to a three ball count on a hitter. And we are in the top of the sixth. Three and one. Garvey is on deck. A touch of interest. The first baseman, Steve Coffey. You can see how good Guidry's control has been this year. But now a touch of interest because Garvey is, in truth, ever dangerous. Popeye can hit it out of anybody's ball yard. Looking fastball on the first pitch. He got fastball and he missed it. A pretty good pitch out on the outside half of the plate. He's a tight lipped man, Garvey, who disguises personal distress very well. Strike two. St. Louis one time with the bad Hungarian. Remember that? <laughs> the bases were loaded. He was walking around behind the mound and struck out three of the toughest hitters in Cincinnati Ball Club with the bases full. One two pitch to Garvey. So the crowd roars as Ron Guidry comes up with a strikeout of Steve Garvey to end the top of the six and the Yankees lead it five to one. Right guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why right guard solid has an action triggered formula. Trigger to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right guard action triggered formula helps keep you dry and odor free all day. Right guard antiperspirant solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. Hey, bet you could use a microwave oven. Sure, but where would I put it? If I move this. Then I gotta move this. And this goes there. Presenting the microwave oven you don't have to make space for. The Space Maker microwave oven from GE. And this goes there. Space Maker fits right over your range. And it even has an exhaust fan and work light. You don't have to make space for a Space Maker. GE, bring good things to life. Good. Now cut it in half. Where's that piece on inflation? It's your broker from Dean Witter. Today? Some people just aren't easy to please. Well done especially when it comes to their investments. Jim, how do you do? You look like you just heard from Dean Witter. At Dean Witter, we can give even the hard-to-please investor something to smile about. Now, Brian. You look like you just heard from Dean Witter. World leaders gather at a summit in Cancun, plus escape on the Chopin Express. Nothing can change. Tomorrow on ABC's World News Tonight. Ron Guidry, the pitcher for the Yankees, leads off the inning. That's another new experience for the Yankee pitcher. And he swings through it and misses. Needenfuhrer is on the mound for the Dodgers. He is the fourth Los Angeles pitcher. Guidry has struck out swinging and sacrificed. Look at here. Look at here. Guerrero comes in makes the catch. So Pedro had him played well on the left center and pulls it down, but the crowd gives the Yankee pitcher a hand anyhow. Told you he 
He's an athlete. They must have watched him in batting practice. That's where he hit every ball, left center. Willie Randolph. Willie Randolph now at the top of the order with Mumphrey to the on deck circle. Big right hander is low and away. George Frazier and Dave LaRoche now are up in the Yankee bullpen. And Randolph gets a letter high fastball and has a rip at it. That's Frazier, the right hander, and LaRoche, the left hander. LaRoche started, uh, spent much of the time in his career with the California Angels. Frazier is a youngster on his way up. One ball and two strikes. I don't know if the Yankees get out of this ball game and win this ball game without having to go to Davis and Gossage. That just makes their riches richer, doesn't it, Jim? Well, it sure does. I think the key is to try to get Davis in one of these games early so they can't use him in back to back ball games. Willie hits it well to left. Baker going back. Dusty has his eye on it and pulls it down. Short of the fence or out number two. The center fielder. Now Jerry it's Jerry Mumphrey, Mumphrey, who's been busy. Air singles, scored twice, stolen the base, and walked. When he goes to the left side, Ron Say comes to the edge of the grass at third with two down. A 5-1 ball game, New York. The Yankees batting in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Yankees one of the few teams I've seen around baseball recently that literally you just a sledgehammer in the on-deck circle. That's lifted toward Baker and left. Dusty makes the catch. So that's only the second time of the ball game. The Yankees have gone down in order. And after six, it's 5-1 New York. Canon presents the new AE-1 program. Watch Tracy Austin put Canon's new camera to the test. It's more camera, more versatile. For the pro photographer. Even more advanced. And for tennis pro Tracy Austin. It's even simpler to use. Here, catch. The new program mode makes it so easy. I'm always ready to shoot like a pro. The new AE-1 program, so advanced, it's simple. And more of both. Canon, the official camera of the World Series. Ah, new car. Chevy Chevette. What's the cost of fortune for the fancy wheels and white striped tires? Standard, father. Radio. Reclining seats <laughs> on your salary. Standard, father. Along with front disc brakes and radial tires. And these fancy stripes? $89 extra. And why would you spend $89 on stripes? The devil made me do it. Oh, Chevy makes good things. <laughs> the devil, you say? The decision is in on all the marbles. The New York Times says, have a ball with this slam-bang, wise-cracking comedy. Rex Reed says, more thrills than a roller coaster. Get out Rocky's Rocky, says Bernard Drew. Yeah. York Daily News says, what a night, what a fight, what a movie. Anything goes here. Peter Falk in All the Marbles, rated R, now playing at a theater near you. It'll be Say, Guerrero, and Monday for Los Angeles. Before the game, Howard talked to Ronnie Say. Ron, you had the problem with the radius, the forearm, and yet you seem to have come back so strongly. How do you account for it? Well, Howard, I tell you, uh, once I did break the radius, I uh, started talking at length with Dr. Job about the potential possibility of my return and what I could look for in terms of things I could do while I was still in the cast. And that whole five-week period that I was out was really one of mental preparation for the time that I would return. I knew the time that I needed to come out of the cast. Uh, I did a lot of jogging. I did a lot of exercising while I was still in the cast, the therapy. Uh, to regain my full range of motion in the wrist after the cast came off uh, only took about four days and within a week I was hitting and uh, it just went so well I was very pleased with the whole recovery period. Pre-game comments of Ron Say who swings and misses on the first pitch from Ron Guidry. Well he certainly made himself a factor in the playoffs very quickly. He sure did. 
Pedri changes and drifts high and outside to make it 1-1. They need his bat. They desperately need his bat. They need good. him in more ways than that. He's That's one right. of the elder statesmen of the club, and he he settles. One and two. Not that bad with the glove at third base either. Tells the old late Frank Lane story when the Dodgers offered him up for trade, and Lane said, I don't want no duck. Well, he's one of their more patient hitters. And as we said earlier, you know, just saw him lay off a good slider that a lot of the other hitters have been chasing tonight. Patience is what they need now, and yet they can't afford to get behind, as you have consistently pointed out. Well, that's true. 2-2. Two -two. Full count now. Alejandro Pina is now throwing in the Los Angeles bullpen, and right-hander, and George Frazier continues to throw in the New York pen. There's Pena. The New York pen is what interests me. One would expect Davis to be getting up momentarily. Line down the left field line, going to the corner. Say turns first, Winfield's on the ball. Say going to second, throw comes in. He's out. Ladies and gentlemen, and you'll look at it again, is why David Winfield is now acknowledged to be one of the great athletes in all of baseball. He can do everything. This evidence. Watch him. Right down the left field foul line. Well, he has a great throwing arm. Not only great, but accurate. I'm not so sure he's out, but... The umpire seem to think so. And this is against one of the cardinal rules of base running. Exactly. You only go to second if you can make it. It's like leading off with a double and trying to stretch it into a triple. Looks safe to me. Pitch to Guerrero. I didn't see a lot of protesting by Say. Maybe missed the bag. Foul back. One and one. Well, you're down five to one. You should be pretty sure when you take that shot at it. I don't know. They haven't seen Winfield. Of course, they knew Winfield when he was uh, at San Diego, and there were the persistent conversation that Winfield was going to become a Dodger. Remember? That's close. Second base. Well, it just kind of turns the inning around. You just mm -hmm. Don't have any pressure on Gidry. He made it. He ran a count of three and two, which he hasn't done very often tonight. Kind of threw it. Took a little bit off a fastball and he say ripped it in the corner and made a bad pitch. Winfield made a great throw and you're that's what I expected, Jim. Ron Davis now working in the bullpen. No ball with George Frazier. Look at that postseason record. Gidry now wobbling. He has walked Guerrero. So once again, that effort of Ron Say to get to second base to throw by Winfield takes on more and more importance. Don't forget, Yidre has not had a complete game since July 23rd, 1980. And as he begins to tire, he begins to force. Jimmy, you're a great pitcher. You don't have to be told that. It's obvious that he begins to force himself and maybe even seek to overthrow. Not seek to, but overthrow, right? Well, he's gone three and two on, on, on say, and uh, three and one, and then walked Guerrero. He's only gone seven innings or more seven times this year. That's Bonnie Gedry who begins to show a little bit of concern. Yet he threw that last pitch 92 miles an hour. How fast can you still throw? <laughs> I haven't asked lately, to be honest. <laughs> snapped off outside and created a rather feeble swing by Monday, didn't it? Well, that was a pretty good pitch, Keith. As we said earlier, it's probably usually his best pitch is his slider. And you can usually get left-handers. If you're left-handed, you can get left-handers out pretty well with that pitch. The Dodgers get in this game. They need Monday to jerk one here. What would still be in the hunt. If really, what's interesting is Landra, who usually plays center field, um, I think it was six for 20 lifetime off Gidry. It's not even in the lineup. 
And uh, maybe I guess Tommy Lasorda thought that because Rick got a clutch hit yesterday, in fact, the game to hit to really get him in. Oh, Kenny series. hasn't hit much lately. He's had some trouble with this team. One two pitch. Well, that's six strikeouts for Gidry. Two down for Steve Yeager, who is the only man to have really damaged Gidry in the ball game. Hit a home run in the fifth. Here's the strikeout of Monday. They call that a nasty slider. All of Gidry's six strikeouts have been swinging. See him slow up on that, Jim? Well, when you're a good pitcher, and I think uh, the point that Ron made in the interview was that he's changed. He's not a thrower anymore. He's a pitcher. The guy hits a fastball for a home run. You come back with an off-speed pitch. That's shot down the left side. <laughs> Foul ball. But not the hanging Yankees. slider. Well, well he, he didn't like himself when he was a thrower. He only won 25 and lost three. He struck out 19 <laughs> in one game. That's not too shabby. Reggie Smith now to the on back circle to get in the pitcher spot. I think he had the best pitcher, the best year that I've ever seen a pitcher have. Two out. Five one. New York lead. Dodgers up in the top of the seventh. Two strike count on Yeager. That's foul. Swung at it. Bad pitch. 18 was the record in strikeouts. May I make a quick correction? It's a good, good month for most pitchers. Change to the tie to make it 1 2. If Smith comes, that means Pena gets a call out of the pen. We'll probably see Tom Needham do it for another inning. Jaeger hits the ball in the air to the right side for Lou Brunello. And the inning is over. So the Dodgers now have stranded four base runners of the ball game. The Yankees lead in the middle of the seventh, five to one. Recently, a few extraordinary wines were entered in a prestigious international competition. Wines made from costly varietal grapes, harvested in some of the world's finest growing regions. An oak-aged Chardonnay, a deep, full-flavored Burgundy, a light, dry Chenin Blanc, a varietal Rosé, a spicy Gewürztraminer. And each of these wines, all from a single winemaker, was judged to be among the best of the world. Silver medal. Gold medal. Silver. Gold, gold medal. The wines, all from America, all from California, and all from the wine cellars of America's premier vintners, Ernest and Julio Gallo. than any other brings out the youth in all of us. Baseball fever. Catch it. It's worth it. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. A look down on Yankee Stadium from the Goodyear Blimp America with Captain Don Woolley flying that big baby out of Dallas, Texas. Billy Sullivan up there with him. Quite a view. He Fred really Bamba is. moved over from Ebbets Field. Left his job with the Dodgers. Joined Mel Allen at Yankee Stadium. A memorable broadcasting team. And Red promptly called it the big ballpark. Nobody's ever changed it. It's what it is. Winfield Penella Watson against big rookie right-hander Needon Fuhrer. Tom's handled him since he came in. It's a 
piece of the corner with a breaking ball. And it's struck one. Winfield of the game. Struck out swinging. That hits against Royce. Fly ball to left, deep and walked. Had a mind too, held in time. Make it one and one. It's been a very quiet opener, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Bottom of the seventh, 5 1 New York. Two and one, the count on Winfield. I thought the Dodgers would come up here much, come in here much more alive than they've been in the manner of the Giants in 51 after the Bobby Thompson home run. When Monty Irvin stole home and the Giants won the open. But it hasn't happened this time. Pops him up. Yeager comes back. Steve's got to play. One out. Right fielder. And here comes Lou Pinella. Hear that? Sounds like but it's not. You know how Lou Pinello defines his hitting ability? He's he asking what kind of a hitter are you? You know what he says? He's a guess hitter. All good hitters usually are. They have enough confidence in their ability to think they know what's coming. And they'll go up there and look for a pitch. Maybe give the pitcher a, a strike or two. A lot of young hitters go up there. They want to swing at everything. You know, Jim, you have to wonder if maybe despite their protestations, they really are emotionally tired at the very least, and physically too, after the two long series. Fly ball deep center. Guerrero turns the wrong way, it hangs up there long enough for Pedro, and now he makes the catch. We're out number two. The first baseman, Bob Watson. What do you think, Jim? I don't know. I think that the three run home run in the first inning uh, not only physically puts you three runs down, but mentally you go up there with a lot different attitude. Uh, I know that the last thing you want to do if you're a pitcher is put your club three runs down in the hole. I'm sure that Jerry Royce knows that too, but sometimes it happens. Bob Watson stands in, swings and misses. So Bob drive into the parking lot. Driving around in a classic, Greg Nettles on deck. He's driving a 1937 Plymouth that his grandma paid $740 for back in 1937. Well, that's a classic. You ought not to be driving that thing around on the streets today. Keep it in the garage and go for a late Sunday afternoon stroll with it somewhere. Does it have metallic paint? Mm, I don't think so. Well, I guess it probably does. It's the original paint. But I, th I thought they used enamel back in those days. Fly ball off to the right side, and it's going to be out of play in the crowd. Line score in the ball game. Yankees had three in the bottom of the first, one in the third, one in the fourth. Dodgers got one on the top of the fifth on Steve Yeager's home run. And take away that three run home run. Ball game. Hit to the right side for Rick Monday. So Needon Fuhrer gets him in order again, and the score remains 5-1 after 7. Back with more series action after this word from our local stations. Thursday, a high school reunion. Can you believe who I'm with? Who are you? Sparks memories of the good old days for bosom buddies. Woo! And when Lotka takes on Alex's personality. What do you think of the human race? I'd like an outsider's opinion. What happens to Alex? Thank you very much. Taxi. Thursday. John Houseman for the investment firm of Smith Barney. Good investments don't walk up, bite you on the bottom, and say, we're here. Finding them takes good old-fashioned hard work, research, the kind they do at Smith Barney. Smith Barney is among a handful of top investment firms singled out for their work in research. Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it.
Just imagine flying to Europe free. Just for flying TWA in the U.S. It's TWA's frequent flight bonus. Fly just 60,000 miles during the next 15 months and get two tickets to Europe free. Other bonuses start at just 10,000 miles. TWA, the only airline that offers two free tickets to Europe. Coming up after the game, Spencer Christian live at Yankee Stadium. And from the past, a look at the old Brooklyn bums, the Dodgers of the past, right after the game. Join us. Richard Simmons, tomorrow morning at 9. A crowd of some 56,470 just applauded as big right-hander Ron Davis comes on. And just look at the numbers. That tells you how effective he's been in postseason play. Daryl Thomas will be the first man to face him. Reggie Smith was out as a possible pinch batter a little while ago, but didn't get a chance to come to the plate. And now here's Daryl Thomas, who can play anywhere, anytime, well for you. Coming up Saturday, a couple of good football games for you, an old rivalry in the Big Eight between Nebraska and Missouri, and an old rivalry in the Big Ten between Minnesota and Iowa. There the times listed for you in your area. So now Ron Davis, who has been awesome in the postseason along with Gossage. Tell you what Davis has done. He's faced 33 batters, retired 28, allowed one single, walked four. Got a little upset when Billy Martin played the stalling game and the umpire and that's what really got him upset wouldn't let him warm up take a few warm up pitches said it would have been a further stalling tactic by Davis Thomas is up there now Darrell has played to every position in the infield I guess but first base played center field and probably if something disastrous happened would be the number three catcher for the Dodgers. Davis comes with his first moment of heat and he misses low for ball one as Alejandro Pena stays in the Los Angeles bullpen and he'll be the next Dodger pitcher. Thomas could conceivably be a guy to play all nine positions. Good. Wanted to I think circumstances being a little different I think this year right. they might have let him. Only two guys that I know of have ever done that. And I'll bet you Jim Palmer knows. Cesar Tobar. Oh, I know that. I know that the other one. Bird Camp. Bird Camp and X. You got it. Oh, yes. Way well, to one go. Two is not bad. Davis goes to three balls and no strikes on Thomas. Hmm. Well, there's not a whole lot of mystery to Ron Davis. He's just going to throw the ball about 93 miles per, per hour. I don't think he hardly ever throws any breaking balls. He does have a slider. But never uses it because it's not his number one pitch and most of the times when you are a short reliever or a middle reliever you come in in situations where you want to get beat if you're going to get beat on your best pitch. There's a strike three and one. Well the hour is late for the Dodgers. They're trailing five to one and they're up in the top of the eighth inning. Ron says he hasn't thrown ten curve balls all season. Well Thomas of course here is trying to get on. They had something going last inning. Leadoff batter is the most important batter that a pitcher can face. Well, Thomas works into the wall. Mm. Look for the goose to get working. The second now we'll go to the top of the order for Davy Lopes. The phone has rung in the pen. The man who answered the phone. Goose who hangs high. It'll be interesting to see if Davy Lopes is taking here. Ball one. Cerrone will go to the mound and have a visit with his big right-hander. Clyde King, 
Mike Ferraro down there to the end. Clyde King, one of the trickiest pitchers I ever saw. Had nothing and you couldn't hit him. A disciple of Branch Rickey, who just loved the canniness of Clyde King. Yogi Berra, the only man I know who wraps his chewing tobacco in diet gum. game hard. Well, that can make a hard game easy, I guess. Maybe. We'll see. Davy calls time as Davis is on the rubber. Lopes knows this game. He's being patient. He's working the man. Dodgers need base runners. Thomas on first. After a walk. Throws it outside. Thomas breaks, goes to second. Now Davis is in deep trouble. He simply can't get control of his pitches. Well, earlier when Bob Castillo for the Dodgers had his control problems, he at least tried to throw another type of pitch, come up with a slider or a curveball. Ron Davis doesn't have that luxury. He basically is a fastball pitcher and I would doubt if Bob Lemon will go with him very long. I doubt it too. He does if he doesn't have it. Well, he's thrown eight pitches and seven of them have been outside of the strike zone. He gave a pass ball there, advancing Thomas. Only time I've seen him do this was when he was used on consecutive days, once during the season at Fenway Park and once against the Brewers. Working Davis for a walk. Lopes works him for a walk, and Bob Lemon has taken a walk with the mound. Decisions, decisions. Bob go out as a water fire. Lemon will go out as a water fire. Is going to come, looks like. Yep. So Ron Davis comes out of the pen. He is ineffective. Goose Gossage is summoned from the bullpen, and the first man he will pitch to will be Jay Johnstone. So we've got a timeout at Yankee Stadium. The Dodgers trying to stir it up at the top of the eighth inning, trailing five to one. Your attention, please. Saturday, exciting regional action on NCAA college football. In a Big 8 battle, the 11th-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers tackle Missouri, which boasts a 5-1 record. Also, Rose Bowl-hungry Iowa, 6th-ranked in the nation and leading the Big 10, attacks Minnesota. The Hawkeyes are the surprise team of the season, having beaten Michigan, Nebraska, and UCLA earlier this year, plus other regional games. Don't miss NCAA college football Saturday on ABC. So here's the goose, Rich Gossage, whose uh, postseason performance has been every bit as impressive as that of Ron Davis. Davis was not impressive on this night. Couldn't find it. Didn't have it. Before the game, Howard talked to the goose. I must say, goose, you looked positively awesome against the Brewers and against the A's. Is it possible that you're throwing harder even than ever before? That you have a sense of strength that you've never even had within yourself before? Well, I don't think so, Howard. I'm, you know, I've always been a power pitcher and I've never, never, ever altered my style of pitching towards anyone. I felt that if we got through the Brewers, I felt that that was going to be the best team that we were going to play if we made it to the World Series or, or whoever won that other, that other division over there. Uh, uh, Milwaukee had an awesome ball club. Any, the whole lineup could hurt you. I felt that I really got psyched up more so for them than I did anybody else. But uh, you know they're they're a fine you know they're a fine ball club and and uh, I just uh, you know I I don't alter my style of pitching. Back to that old same question again. I don't alter my style of pitching towards anyone. And I I, I go out there and air it out for two innings and uh, uh, you know I don't worry about anything. 
Jay Johnstone steps in as the pinch hitter for Bill Russell, the shortstop, which probably means Daryl Thomas will go in to play that position. And Gossage first pitch is a strike. The second pitch is ball one. It's one and one to Jay Johnstone. Does the neck alter his style? He goes out and airs it out for two innings. He's going to have to do that now. He's high to go two and one. He comes out of the pen, though. This is the thing that makes him so awesome. He comes out throwing 95 mile an hour fastball. He's not even loose yet. That's fouled away out of play. And he's such a fearsome looking figure out there on the mound, whirling and throwing a half a baseball at you. And yet, personally, you'll never in the world meet a easier going, more humble kind of developer. I guess that's often the case. When you're that big, you can afford to be a nice fellow. Huh? Foul the way. Well, he's particularly effective on right handers because, like you said, he comes out of really looks like he's coming out from behind him. Thomas at second, Lopes at first, speed on the bases for the Dodgers. The count two balls, two strikes on Johnstone, and the wind now swirling around the infield, kicking up dust. You know, Johnstone used to hit well, Tom Seaver. Check swing foul. Used to hit me pretty well, too. Did he? Oh, he's a good fastball hitter, and he's, a, again, a, you talk about Lou Pinella being the guy that goes up there and looks for pitches. A, you know, the two strike count, he's not going to, he's just going to look for the ball, but he'll go up there in situations and get a pitch that he can handle. That's lifted in the air, the left side. Nettles pursues to the corner, and it is out of play. He had three of them there Winfield, Nettles, and uh, Milburn, and Greg lost his hat. He's hanging in there, John Stone. Give him that. Oh, he's a situation hitter. If you get behind him, then he's going to try to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And right now, of course, guy throwing 95 miles per hour, he's just trying to make contact. Like to punch the ball to left field. Gets the ball to right field, drops for a base hit. Thomas turns third. He's coming home. Lopes goes to third. 5 2 New York. Johnstone gets the call and does his job. Definitely looking fastball. Now it's Dusty Baker. Then Steve Garvey. Nobody out. 5-2 ball game. No quitting this team. Hearts begin to beat in Los Angeles, but there it is. High fly ball to right center for Fanella. Tagging at third. Lopes, he's coming. 5-3 ball game. Stone at first. And here's Steve Garvey. Ball one. Garvey standing at the plate in a 5 3 ball game represents the tying run. And run say on deck. Pops him up, foul coming back out of play. Two and one. There's say. Frankie Fresh used to say it better than anyone. All those bases on balls. Harvey steps out. Most irritates managers. Don't take advantage of your defense. Three and one now on Garvey. Tommy's coming alive. He senses maybe, maybe the thought to be impossible could happen. Garvey alone. What a play by Nettles at third base. I've never seen such a burglar. He really is, isn't he? Oh, did Garvey get that pitch? Well, this ball is really hit. Oh. And they always said that third base was reaction type of position. Don't see too many better plays than that. 
Ouah. Well, he had a great hand in beating the Dodgers with defensive play in uh, 78, particularly game three, if you remember. The crowd is standing for Nettles' play. Not only that, how it must haunt Lasorda. He must think he's turned the calendar back three years. Ron Sayer now with two out. You'd always have also have to question how well Gossage is throwing. You know, do. Two balls two shots. have been pulled. Mm. One and one to say. I think you touched on it earlier. He wasn't really loose. Well, I think when you bring Ron Davis and you don't expect to get into the ball game as soon as, as he was called for. It. golf was such a tough game. Hey, it's a lot easier hitting a quarterback than a little white ball. So us Linksters drink light beer from Miller. Not just because light tastes great, but because it's got a third less calories than a regular beer. And it's less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're out there trying to get birdies. Yeah, those things move awfully fast. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. We're Tom Goddard, managing a mine that produces the country's biggest source of electricity, American coal. We're Jerry Herman, working at a large western mine that will be producing coal for more than 30 years. We're Brian Leslie, sending the coal to be transformed into electricity for millions of Americans. We're more than 100,000 people working on energy. We're Exxon. Marcus, I see <coughs> whisker. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. I try. Next time, Jose, give it the pivot. The Gillette Atro razor pivots to continually adjust and hug every curve, contour, and angle. No other razor shaves closer and more comfortably than Atra. I give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Atra. Give it the pivot with Gillette Atra. Saturday, NCAA college football action as Nebraska attacks Missouri in a Big 8 battle. Minnesota tackles 6th rank Iowa, plus other regional games Saturday on ABC. And now pitching. Here is the fifth Dodger pitcher, Dave Stewart, who only warmed in the last part of the previous inning, so he has not thrown that many pitches, but he is big and he is strong and he can flat fog it home. Shortstop now is Daryl Thomas, as we suggested a little while ago, replacing Bill Russell. And Stewart will be pitching to Greg Nettles, who made the great play at third on Garvey's shot. Rick Cerrone and Larry Milburn. Stewart, I'm sure everybody in Los Angeles remembers, was the losing pitcher in two games against Houston. I'll tell you, it's always this way, Jim, isn't it? The great play, and then the guy gets up. And Nettles made an almost equally great play on Ted Simmons in the start of the Milwaukee Brewers series. He does it almost by habit. I thought Lasorda was going to come out and count the number of men on the field. 
Well, it goes back to what we said. Uh, you know, he plays extremely deep. He has great hands. I mean, he's one of the, the reason the Yankees are as good a team as they are, because uh, they have all these left-handed pitchers, and you have a tendency a lot of times to pull the ball, and he's there to catch it. 37 years old. The whispers at the start of the year. He had lost a step. He was through. Instead, he's had an absolutely great year. All right, let's see what Dave Stewart does with him. Nettles has hit three fly balls to Rick Mundy in right field. Two of them he just missed, I think. Swings through that one for strike one. I thought young Tom Niedenfuhr did a good job. He pitched three innings. A lot only one hit. Well, he did do his job. He, he kept them in the game, and they're, they're back in it. And right now it's Stewart's job to do the same thing. He's got medals in the hole at two strikes. 95 miles an hour. It's like the goose. He throws a hummer. He's a good athlete. He's kind of the way he moves. Very graceful athlete. Foul tip at the plate. Got big legs. Going to be a power pitcher for a long time unless he has misfortune. He was headed back to AAA, run out of options, and he got very upset about it, including whacking his pitching hand against a concrete wall. But then uh, the Dodgers let Don Stanhouse go and uh, kept Stewart. One and two. Stanhouse floating in his pool in Las Vegas these days. He's getting married this Saturday. That's what he says. <laughs> what do you mean that's what he that's said? That's what she said. <laughs> One and two. Two and two. You have reason to doubt uh, it, King? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they don't call him Stan the Man Unusual for, <laughs> for any reason. <clears throat> the lovely Kyle Stevenson from Dallas. I'm going to wait Big wedding in Dallas. Honeymoon. 2-2 pitch coming up here as Nettle steps out for a moment. Well, Stewart had him in a hole at 0-2, and now he's gone to a full count. Sharon is on deck. Nettle's leading off. Bottom of the eighth for the Yankees. They lead 5-3. So Stewart... With a two strike edge on Nettles at 0 and 2, walks in. The catcher, Rick Sarone. Sarone steps in. Headless tonight. Tomorrow night it'll be Bert Hooten, the knuckle curve bowler for the Dodgers, against Tommy John, the sinker bowler. Happy goes into the University of Texas Hall of Honor November 21. This year he became eligible for the Hall of Honor. He graduated 10 years ago and he's instantly being put there. High in the air foul out of play left side. What a year Hooten has had. He has never given in to a batter. Just a great competitor. And he's reached a whole new peak for himself this year. Well, I would think that if they would be trailing, if they eventually lose this game tonight, that would be the type of pitcher you'd want to send out there. Pitch three excellent games in the playoffs. Two strike pitch to Sarone. Ball is hit to short center. Guerrero coming in a hurry to make the catch. That thing was hanging and hanging. and. Pedro just kept pumping and pumping, and sure enough, he was able to get there. Well, Cerrone certainly didn't do his job, leaving the runner stuck at first. Well, I, I think Mr. Stewart's 95-mile-per-hour fastball had something to do with that. He just kind of ran it in on him and sawed him off, didn't he? That he did. All right, Larry 
Milburn from the left side against the right hand. To Darrell Thomas steps on the bag at second goes to first for the double play and the inning is over. And so we'll go to the night. Five three ball game. Why is our Citation X11 such a hero with performance-minded Americans? Let's ask single person. Citation X11, super car. The handling is impressive, yet I've got 40 cubic feet of space here for all my toys. More amazing, it carries five adults comfortably. Then your Citation X11 will fit right in when you're married and have kids. I'm going to pretend you never said that. Now get bigger savings with even lower 12.9% financing. People trust Seiko technology for bold sports watches that perform brilliantly, even 100 meters beneath the sea. People trust Seiko for slim dress watches with every timekeeping function you'll probably ever need. People trust Seiko for watches that are as finely crafted as they are technologically advanced. In fact, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. As your authorized dealer, as an intelligent consumer, I wanted to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' Asteroids. But other companies don't make Asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' Missile Command. But other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari. We'll go to the top of the ninth inning for the Dodgers. It'll be Guerrero, Monday, and Yeager against the Goose. A 5 3 New York lead. Foul upstairs out of play. We have a, a note given us from the Commissioner's office, I would presume, which confirms the fact that Cagney will throw out the first ball. James Cagney will throw out the first ball tomorrow night. And furthermore, they say that despite reports that he was denied the privilege of throwing it out tonight, it was not so. That they had waited until the commissioner had discussed it with George Steinbrenner. The decision has been made that Mr. Cagney will throw out the ball. I knew that earlier, Keith, but refrained from saying so in deference to the commissioner putting out the statement. Where did all that nonsense come from in the first day? I don't know, but Gossage is playing with some nonsense now because the hitter on deck is Rick Monday, and that's no nonsense. Three and two. Two grow. Rick can hit one out even if it's Tuesday. Through the fastball, in on the hands and got him. And this is why Goss is so effective. The ball just run into the right hander. It looks like it's over the plate when it finishes. You can see Cerrone having to reach for it inside. Rick Monday. Tommy will breathe fire. They didn't show us that much. We had him. Our pitches held him after that first inning. The Yankees have been quiet since the bottom of the fourth. Bob Watson's three run home run, still the big blow of the ball game. Left-handed hitter. All the way. We're just past 11 o'clock Eastern time. Local news will be on for you. As soon as our game is done. Game one of the 1981 World Series. Yankees are leading it 5-3. Last chance for the Dodgers. One out. Howard, you mentioned earlier why they don't bunt on Nettles. He's five or six steps behind the bag. 
didn't take advantage of. I think if this series goes six or seven games, they're going to have to bring Nettles in closer to home plate. And try to hit some balls by him. You can't allow him to play as deep as he did. On the outside corner, and Monday is not pleased. Doesn't matter whether he is or not, it's been called. The whole story on the goose tonight was Davis had to be gotten out of there so quickly. The goose had not, as Jim Farmer said, had time properly to warm up, to loosen up. Now the goose is thrown. Your attention, please. The thing had a pretty good run off the outside. Well, I remember Hank Bauer telling Davey Johnson when he took a 3-2 fastball with the bases loaded. It's close enough for the umpire to call. It's close, close enough to you to swing. Two down for the Dodgers in the top of the ninth inning. The Yankees on top 5-3. And Kenny Landro is up there. The ball one. Best he hit at David Johnson. One and one. 41 or 43 home runs for Atlanta one year. Wasn't right after we traded. Wasn't that amazing? <laughs> Goose in the ball. Pitcher Royce will be back after this commercial and the word from our local state. Looking for the right field to invest in. And the right investment in those fields can be frustrating. 